Hi everyone, this is Charlize from Full of Chess and welcome to our series Chess Books for Beginners. We'll be focusing on core concepts that every beginner should know and then we'll take a look at some of the best books you can use to learn them. Today's topic is Chess Tactics. This is probably one of my favorite topics in chess. These are the exciting moments when you win a piece, you win the game. It's a series of moves that are just bam in your opponent's face and you gain some kind of advantage. Now, tactics can be very complicated, but there are a few basic ones, a few basic concepts that everyone should know and that we build off of. We're going to be talking about that today. And our first one is hanging pieces. Now, hanging pieces are pieces that are undefended, such as this bishop here, it has nothing protecting it. Or uh, hanging pieces can be pieces that are defended, but uh, are more valuable than the pieces attacking them. Finally, you can have a piece that is defended, but not enough times. So let's take a look at a few positions. In this one, we have got this bishop that's hanging here. We've got this black queen that's out and because nothing is protecting the bishop, we can just go ahead and grab that free piece. Now, it's important to always be on the lookout for hanging pieces and make sure you don't have any of your own. Just make sure your pieces are always protected. But wherever your opponent's hanging pieces are, usually we can see a few tactics come from that and we'll check out a few positions later let's look at this next position here we have got the black queen that is under attack as you can see the queen is defended but the bishop our bishop can just go ahead and grab her and she would be considered hanging because of course black does not want to lose a queen to a bishop the queen's a powerful lady of the game we need her Finally, uh, our last kind of hanging piece is one that is protected, such as this knight over here. The black queen is looking at the knight, making sure the knight's okay. But alas, the knight is not okay since we have our queen and our bishop attacking it twice. That means that we can just go ahead, grab the knight, and the queen won't really capture back because our queen is defending this is a really cool position there's a lot going on but as you can see the moves were pretty easy to find once you know what you're looking for next up let's look at forks now a fork is the most common type of double attack where one piece executes two or more attacks at the same time this attack can be on a piece or more than one piece, but it can also be on a piece and a checkmate square. The point is, as we can see in this position, the knight comes to d6, forking the queen and the king. The point is that you put your opponent in a bit of a pickle. They have to decide which piece to save. In the case of a king being involved, of course it's a check, so black has to move the king and then you pick up the queen or if you're forking two pieces you're picking up the other piece whichever one your opponent doesn't save as we mentioned there are two types of forks one is attacking two or more pieces at the same time but if you have a look at this position here we are attacking a piece a hanging piece and we are also attacking this f7 checkmate square so white is forking black asking black to uh, decide if they want to get checkmated or if they want to lose the rook of course you know losing a piece sucks but it's better than getting checkmated so after black moves defends the checkmate then we just go ahead and grab that free rook these are basic forks you'll get a lot of kinds of positions where you have to make the fork happen as with every tactic and we're going to look at a few different kind of double attacks later next up let's talk about another super common tactic that you must know that is the pin now a pin simply put is when you attack two pieces on a line and the piece that is in front can't move because there is a more valuable piece behind it such as this position over here 
we've got this rook and this knight on the same diagonal and that's what i mean by lines we're talking about ranks files or diagonals this is where our pin tactic is happening and where a lot of other tactics happen remember chess is not just about pieces it's also about squares now, in any case, we see these two pieces are on the same diagonal, so what black does is comes up and pins the knight. That means that now the knight is under attack. In this case, it's also hanging, but it shouldn't move because there is a rook behind it, and we know the rook is more valuable than the knight. This is called a relative pin. The other type of pin is called an absolute pin. Same idea, you're attacking two pieces on a line, the piece in front can't move because the piece behind is more valuable. But in the case of an absolute pin, the piece can absolutely not move because the king is behind it. As you can see, this rook on d1 is pinning the knight, stopping it from moving because of course the king is behind it. Now when you have pins in your games and you'll have many in your games you also need to know how to take advantage of it and usually you want to put pressure on the pin piece that's an easy way of remembering it pp on the pp which is put pressure on the pin piece oh that's usually what i use in my coaching and in this case you can do it with a move like c4 attacking this knight uh, asking it to move of course the black knight its only defender can capture the pawn but after that this knight is left hanging and we can capture it we did all of this we won material by putting pressure and using a pin now let's talk about the a tactic similar to a pin that's called a skewer now a skewer is, as I said, very similar to a pin. You're also attacking on lines, on diagonals. And uh, the only difference is, it's a little bit more uh, difficult to handle because this time, the more valuable piece is in front. So if we take a look at this position here, black can simply play bishop f6, attacking two pieces on the same line. But here we've got the king, which is the most valuable piece in chess in the front and it's a check so the king has to move and in skewers when the piece in front moves you go ahead and you capture the piece at the back uh, as pins and skewers happen on ranks files and diagonals you can only do this tactic with your rooks bishops and queens um, that is the only kind of tactic really that works because we're working on long range diagonal so we need these long range pieces so earlier we spoke about a fork being a double attack which means that two attacks are happening at the same time double attack is basically the umbrella term for tactics that fit into this kind of concept and the next one we are going to talk about or the next two will be discovered attacks and double checks now discovered attacks it's all in the name what is happening is that you are moving a piece away to dis discover an attack from behind. So as we can see in this position, the rook is eyeing that queen, but the knight is standing in the way. So what we're going to do is execute another attack by moving this knight to f6 with a check on the king, also attacking the queen, but of course the attack on the king is the forcing move here. And while we executed this check, our rook discovered an attack on the queen. So when black captures us, we will just capture the queen next. Discovered attacks are very exciting and they can be a little bit tricky. I would say one of the trickier tactics to work through, but nevertheless, an important one. A type of discovered attack or discovered check can also be a double check. Now, a double check is probably the most forcing move in chess because what's happening is that you are checking your opponent twice with two different pieces. Of course, you don't get two moves that you can just bring any piece into the game to attack your king how a double check occurs is through a discovered attack you move the piece out of the way uh, to check the king and meantime you're also discovering another attack from behind in this position we can see the bishop is eyeing the king down here and what black will do is black will play knight f2 
you can see we've got a double check over here the knights looking at the queen the bishops looking at the king and this king is just in danger all it can do is move to g1 since the h2 square is protected by the bishop and now a nice checkmate that came from this position is the knight captures the queen and it's checkmate but this all came from the position of being a double check right now that we have got our basic tactics out of the way let's take a look at a few books and how we can study these tactics how we can do puzzles because guys doing puzzles every day is just so great for your chess brain you're sharpening up you're able to see patterns that you'll see in the games and you'll just get so quick at solving them Let's take a look at a few different books. Our first book that we're going to take a look at is called Everyone's First Chess Workbook. You can see there have been amazing reviews of this book. It's for beginners. We're going to take a look at what's inside. But even from the cover, you can see it's bright, it's bold. They've got more than enough practical exercises for you. But the content from the book is also great. If we take a look at the table of contents over here, you can see that all tactics are covered and moreover the tactics are first explained in depth i'm not sure if you can see the board here but in the book you'll be able to view the board uh, on the 4hs web app or ios or android apps you can read the book and understand the positions play through them there they show you what the concept is with different pieces and it's basically quite simple to understand all these diagrams and of course you can play through it on the board and then this is followed by a few guided exercises which i really like it's basically the book telling you what you're looking for it wants you to understand from their perspective uh, what they want from you, which pieces to use sometimes, just a little bit of help to get the solutions. But this is only for the first few. The puzzles aren't going to be that easy throughout. As you can see in this position right here, uh, use a knight fork to win a rook. So you know what you're looking for, you know which piece you're using. And when we go down, we've got a few uh, test positions, actually many, many test positions that start off easy. Um, and just basically the concept that you've just learned, you're putting it into practice. And you have many different concepts to do that with. This is a great first book for anyone getting into chess or, you know, getting into chess tactics. Right. Next up, we've got the book called Winning Chess Tactics by one of the most prolific authors in chess, Yasser Serawan. And he has written multiple books uh, for every level. I mean, he's played against all the top players in the world. He knows what he's talking about. And he has a book called Winning Chess Tactics. As you can see, it's also really well reviewed. If we look at the sample, which we did just did for everyone's first chess workbook, and you can do for any book on forward chess, you can view the free sample, get a little sneak peek of what the book has to offer. In the sample here, you can also see the table of contents. Now, of course, I have access to all of these because I own the book. Um, but usually your sample, you'll just have a few uh, chapters that you can have a look at. And here you can see once again, all um, tactics are covered, even goes into more um, aggressive tactics, more advanced tactics like uh, x-rays and windmills, decoy, clear and sacrifice. But all the basics that we also just spoke about like pins skewers forks and once again you get a little explanation with some diagrams and uh, then you get put to the test and you have to find out uh, find the solution in the game based on the tactic that you just learned but what this book has also done and I think is really cool is they have given you a list of great tacticians and their games so you can see how these tactics are actually used in games by some of the best players of all time we have adolf anderson paul morphy alexander alakine some former world champions in here 
and you can see uh, how they played their games I mean how these tactics that you just learned came up in their games and I think it's really cool to see this practical side of things um, so if you are wanting to learn the tactics but you're also wanting to see them in games this is definitely the book for you now if there's something any coach will tell you that is repetition is one of the best teachers in chess especially when it comes to tactics because the more you do a concept the more you see it the more it becomes ingrained in your brain and you will notice these patterns and pick them up in your games now that's why i really like this book called a thousand and one chess exercises for beginners from new in chess and it's basically just devoted to chess tactics once again let's take a look at the sample here they put it pretty simply i really like how it's just out there all the concepts and not the you know advanced concepts that come later these are all the basic ones that you basically need to know need to uh, know very well and train all the time it's got all of the tactics that we spoke about pins skewers and checkmates as well and if we have a look at our let's take a look at the skewer chapter if we uh, see once again you'll see that there is some kind of explanation of the concept and then there are straightforward positions and i like that they have little you know um text over here to give you a little bit of a clue to what you're looking for but not enough not too much and yes i really like the exercises here it doesn't confuse anything it puts it plain and simple you know what you're getting into and really this is one of those books that you can just work through the whole thing and you know that your tactics are in top shape now one of the concepts we didn't speak about too much in this video but of course comes part of your should be part of your tactics training is checkmate puzzles and checkmate puzzles they vary from one move to you know let's say at this stage three moves and these are the kind of puzzles you want to do uh, and don't get me wrong some checkmate puzzles uh, mates in ones are quite difficult i'll actually add one to the blog post that goes along with this video but in general these are patterns you need to learn you know they are checkmates that have a million different names you don't have to know the names you just have to know how to do the checkmates and this book is dedicated to checkmating it is uh, all about different checkmating and different moves but if you see the exercises it tells you what to do it tells you to look for a check and then to look for a mate afterwards which is great because you're looking for forcing moves i included a few examples from this book and every book we're talking about in the blog post if you want to check it out and our final book that we're going to be talking about today is called simple attacking plans also really greatly reviewed this i would say is a little bit more advanced than beginner it's a uh, pretty simple simple attacking plans hence the name but what you are going to be dealing with is not learning the tactics individually you're going to be seeing them played out in games now let's take a look at the sample I think this is one of my favorite tactics books because as you can see there are so many games from real players real tournaments and the book basically shows you how the winner went about to gain an advantage using some tactics and simple attacking plans uh, and one and how to execute these kinds of attacks in your games i thought that this was a pretty important book to include because it's fun you see real chess you see some exciting stuff and there are some really cool games like this one uh, we're looking at right now you can view the full game in the blog post but uh, it's just full of attacks now one of the best ways to learn anything is having some kind of incentive of course and that's the great thing about chess puzzles you want to gain some kind of rating you want to be able to mark yourself against how much you've improved and you can do just that with the tactics trainer on forward chess 
If the book is Tactics Trainer enabled, you can simply open it on either the web app, Android or iOS apps. And once you start puzzle mode through this little button over here, you can solve the position and uh, without seeing any of the solutions, of course. And what will happen is after solving the position, you'll gain some rating. You can have a look at your uh, puzzle history, which ones you've done, which ones you have to do, uh, or which ones you did but did not do so well. And you can also take a look at your rating progress over time. This is a really nice way to judge yourself uh, on how well you're doing with your tactics, or it can just give you a little push to do them more often. Of course, we all like to see that rating gain. And that's that for today. You can find all the books we've spoken about linked below as well as a blog post where you can take a look at some of the positions and just have a look at the free samples from the books uh, just to dip your toes in the water and see what you like and if it's a book for you. Next time we'll be talking about endgames. See you then.